Welcome back to Summit Live. Hi again, Ari Kaplan, head of evangelism at Databricks. And I'm here with two of my favorite people, Richard and I go back before Databricks and we're both we we in do. Chicago and uh, have a lot of uh, fun there. And then Tim, also Chicago land. Great to have a, a customer to talk everything AIBI Genie and what you're doing in, in the healthcare space. We'll get back to you in a moment, but Richard, there's been some incredible announcements today. That has indeed. So I'd love to have you walk through some of them and show us yeah, a bit more. Yeah, sure. So, I'm, so I, I run marketing for AIBI, which is Genie and Dashboards, as you know. Um, so I thought I'd just like kind of summarize what we just heard in the keynote. Uh, but really the star of the show here is Tim. He's a customer. He's actually using this stuff like in the real world. So mm -hmm. we wanted to get over to him as soon as possible. But um, uh, 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 so I... Is, can we sh show a yeah, slide? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. so um, what you can see now, if you, uh, uh, you can see on the screen, is that one of the big um, headlines is that uh, Genie is generally available now, which is super exciting because um, we've been like really uh, testing this out in the wild over the last year. We've actually got over 4,000 customers using it now. Um, so it really battle tested, you know, for production use cases. And along with the GA comes a lot of new features. Uh, so some of those include uh, this Im uh, uh, improved, what we're calling knowledge store, which is really like where Genie stores its instructions. So think of that as like a local semantic layer uh, that makes Genie a lot smarter and a lot kind of teaches it about yeah, your custom, your actual unique data within your enterprise. So we've got this concept of knowledge mining. Uh, so this is new now. So uh, an admin who maintains the Genie space might log in one morning and have five new instructions suggested to them because various queries have been running on those same tables overnight from different workloads. Maybe it's BI reports or data scientists. So it's going to say, hey, I'm noticing these common queries go over and over again. Do you want to add these to the knowledge store's instructions? Incredible. So the admin can accept those or reject those and add them that way. Uh, the next thing uh, we've, we've added is this concept of knowledge extraction. So many of the times, um, even the admin can't predict what customers or what users are going to ask. So in this example we see on the screen, uh, somebody is just um, asking about pipeline and Genie doesn't quite understand uh, what we mean by pipeline. So in the moment, the user actually clarifies. And then you can see right now as Genie says, um, uh, uh, the user will click, yes, I, I like this, um, this new suggestions. Genie will actually say, okay, I'm going to learn these new suggestions. And they get presented as knowledge snippets. And then the admin can add those into the Genie knowledge store as well. So just more ways of like building up Genie's repository of custom knowledge about your particular use case and data. Yeah, I love that. And I love having admins uh, part of the loop. Yeah, you, we always need that. Otherwise, it would just get crazy and yeah. overwhelm the LLMs with all these instructions. And then one of the most exciting things here, which you were seeing on slide, is uh, actually the ability to not just lock that knowledge away up in that in individual genie space, but be able to push that back into Unity Catalog. So other applications, other genie spaces, other BI reports, really anything, you know, data scientists and notebooks can then benefit from those semantics uh, in, their work, in their work. So we'll actually be uh, allowing people to publish from the Genie knowledge store back into Unity Catalog. Mm -hmm. uh, and then probably the most exciting for me was the introduction of, G of Genie Deep Research, which really kind of takes Genie beyond answering basic Top level, like what happened, questions, what what happened in the past, what happened, what's happening right now, into well, why is it happening, and how can we improve things? So, uh, Genie Deep Research will really kind of spin up a bunch of agents that all individually la act like separate analysts that go off and do deep research on a particular why question, like why did tr uh, the trend in sales spike in November, and come up with a research plan and results trying to explain those reasons why. Yeah, this so is like that's, the game changer. Yeah, it just makes, it, makes yeah. it really actionable uh, information versus just telling, some, telling the user that something is happening. Um, so the, the other piece that we're really excited about is 
in the past, this is where a business user had to come to actually access Genie Spaces, which is very, very overwhelming. Nobody in their right mind uh, in the business wants to deal with this kind of complexity. So we actually are introducing a brand new portal to access all of this information called Databricks One. So any business user will be able to come to this portal and ask questions of their Genie Spaces, look at the dashboards they're allowed to um, view and interact with, and also uh, use any Databricks Databricks apps that have uh, been published to them as well. Uh, so that's all I had really in terms of slides, but um, you know, we're full GA now across the whole of AIBI. Um, so uh, Genie and uh, Dashboards are both GA with Databricks 1 available as a beta preview coming very, very soon. Uh, so we're uh, excited to show customers that very soon. But with saying all of that, I'm just a guy talking about mm -hmm. technology. What, what is really cool is to actually hear you know, some stories from our customers. So uh, yeah. let's, like, let's uh, introduce Tim and uh, sure. talk to him a little about, about his use cases. Hi, uh, I'm Tim, I'm from Premier. Um, Premier's mission is to help improve the community of, the, of all, all of uh, our providers serve. We have solutions that serve uh, doctors, hospitals, and health systems, about two out of every three of those in America. Mm. We collect that data, we standardize it. And one of the things we do is help with risk adjustment. So risk adjustment allows our organizations to get opportunities. And one of the things we highlighted in a couple of our sessions at the, at the conference was um, folks go to the hospital. You don't want them to go back unless they have to. And so with Genie, we had a way outside of the traditional dashboard, outside of traditional BI tool, to give them a way to just naturally language ask questions. Not all of our users, like you mentioned about the business users, want to be in reports, even reports that are as pretty and designed as what's in the BI tool. So with Genie, we were able to, within three days, do something we'd been trying two years with our own text to SQL mm -hmm. um, with one engineer. So he got it in and configured it and allowed us to give our clinicians and our users a way to really conversate with their data. And the big thing about that, and of course, um, part of our mission is to give opportunities and insights to our clinicians. How nice is it that they can go and type and say, which hospitals had an opportunity to do better with readmission? Um, as, much, as much as 30% of all children that go to the hospital come back that don't need to. And so, you know, we want our kids, our families to come home safe, and we help give that data to the clinicians to do that. And Jeannie helped us along the way. That's great. Well, first of all, I love hearing helping save and prolong people's lives and yeah. their health care. So now this is my favorite uh, use case uh, <laughs> just for that reason. Um, now, I know Genie launched. It was incredible. It made a ton of sense. You know, you were talking, you know, you could spend months and even years trying to build, you know, like a governed chatbot that has reasonable results. Yeah. And now you see people being able to spin up Genie Spaces much more quickly and arguably uh, uh, more accurately and more governed and with human in the loop. So uh, about a year ago, uh, Richard and I and everyone talking about AIBI Genie, there's a lot of like, you know, internal playing around with it, but not going production. So I I'm glad to hear you are in production. Uh, we're, we're in this. production internally with all of our consultants that, yeah. that help our organizations improve. And with some of the features that, are, that came out today, we'll be able to extend that to our, a lot of our business users more easily. As Richard mentioned, maybe that first user interface is not what we want to give to business users. So really that release we were waiting for, that's yeah. critical to us. We're super excited to be able to get former business users, I, I learned how to program a while ago, <laughs> uh, into the tools, and then also extend it out to all of our members externally as well. So that's our next steps. And a lot of the features that we were kind of waiting on are now getting really close to production. So we've got lots of people using it and we're going to have even more people using it in the future. Uh, congratulations, that's fantastic. And hopefully inspiration to all the different customers in all industries to you know, go through the steps, get it into production, and then you know, the value from that. And it's uh, like, what, what's the, the, the usage like? Like you had mentioned just being able to ask uh, questions in native yeah. language. What's that? Well, I think one of the great things is is when we, we see the usage, we also see the stuff that's already built into Genie, like the thumbs up, thumbs down. Mm -hmm. And so we're really making sure we have an operational process around that. Um, I asked BrickBot kind of along those lines, are you a pug-enabled robot? And, <laughs> uh, the first time it said yes. 
And the second time there was some enterprising person at Databricks that says, I'm not allowed to answer that question, only ask me questions about, yeah. uh, <laughs> about the conference, right? So I think that's part of it is we have some really good usage, but also just the ability for us to maintain it and really make sure that it gets better over time. It's really super critical. And I love yeah, humans in the loop and uh, not hallucinating. Like if it doesn't know the answer, sure. it'll just say you don't have that information and then a human can guide it. Like that when, when I give demos and I, I use it, I, I do sports on the side and uh, use it for large data sets that are pretty impressive. But um, you know, the question is what's Databricks fiscal year? And it will just say, I don't know. And then somebody defines it starts February 1st, it ends you know, this date. And then the subsequent people that use you know, Genie uh, get better and more precise insights. So what's that experience been like for you? Well, the, at first I kind of dodged your question <laughs> about usage. The, the issue is, is normally you would track usage in a BI tool and you'd, you'd track all these metrics. Right. But if Genie delivers the insight the first time, right, we got to learn how to think about usage differently because it's speeding up our users' ability to get to our healthcare organizations to help them improve. So Genie might answer the question the first time out and they don't have to go through 14,000 dashboards. So when we think about usage, we're still trying to figure out what do we really want to measure? So, right. um, because it's delivering the accurate results and it's doing it in like one or two questions where you might be clicking through a dashboard forever. Great, and I know one question I can kind of have ESP to the world is like, you know, they uh, love, love the idea, but then like how do you trust or how do you evaluate the accuracy or just trust to make sure um, it, it's giving answers, you know, to the questions in the language of your business. Sure. So it was really great because Genie has some things built in that allow us to benchmark. And what we did is we took our, our production reports, the reports I talked about that we've always been using to do this, and we benchmarked it against that. And what we found because we kept our use case narrow and with Unity Catalog being defined, Genie is really excellent at that, right? It, it kind of hones in and we put it through a stress test and it got 100% accuracy. So we looked at the SQL that would be in our production reports. We looked at the SQL Genie was generating. We had people that didn't know SQL testing it, Great. right? Uh, our operations people, the people that you were talking about, like the business users, and every answer was accurate. Now that's no answer is gonna be accurate 100% of times with these bots, but beyond the stuff we tested that have been hit more than a million times, oh, same wow. answer, clear across the So board. you've added those SQL queries yes. from were you using Power BI or something we like that? We were using or, uh, Tableau. Oh, Tableau, okay. Same difference, so. So the same, so those questions go directly into Genie's instructions, yeah, exactly. so Genie's guaranteed. I skipped the right a step. Results. So yeah, the great thing about it is we could put those SQL queries direct, directly back yeah. into the instructions area of Genie. Yes. And that allows us to really easily benchmark, right? And say, are we having problems hallucinating? Is there any issues? And so that was really good. Very That's cool. great. And Richard, I want to hear, like, are there any other customer examples, different industries that, that you love? Uh, yeah, I mean, one that's really near and dear to me being from the UK, uh, not such a big company, but there's a company called the AA mm. uh, in, uh, in the UK, They're like AAA uh, yeah. in the US. So they come and rescue you, um, when you when your car breaks down on the side of the road. Uh, and they rescued me many times when I was a teenager <laughs> in the types of cars I used to drive when I was a teenager. <laughs> uh, but they're actually using Genie as well uh, to help with um, a lot of the call center requests and a lot of their marketing efforts as well. Uh, and what they're actually using is uh, Genie's API. So something we haven't really talked about is that you don't have to go to the Genie UI to get the answers. You can actually embed it inside uh, custom applications or as they have done inside Microsoft Teams. So, you know, what they're trying to do is actually not even bring their business users to Databricks, but just meet them in the, in the tools and applications they're already using every day, like Teams and Slack and SharePoint and so on. Uh, so those guys have like a really good deployment of Genie, but inside, uh, you know, inside Teams. That's great. Now, we have a little less than two minutes left. So two things, I first of all want to emphasize how easy and simple this is, at least to get started. So you could make it Genie space uh, so quickly. I, I, I do it, you know, in the simplest form, like in under 30 seconds, yep. if you already have have the data and it's already in Unity Catalog. Um, 
Uh, 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 so, so I just wanted to emphasize... Yeah, it's very, very important. easy yeah. to create a new Genie space. You do need to kind of maintain, make sure your data in Unity Catalog is well documented. Right. You're using primary and foreign keys. So the, the more knowledge that's in Unity Catalog, the smarter Genie will be. And then you add to that knowledge over time as people start interacting uh, through instructions. And Great. Stuff like and in that. the final minute, um, any like call to action? I know I love our, our demo site, but like if people want to learn more, see things, we're, we're should they go? Uh, well, I mean, if you're an existing Databricks SQL customer, you already are a, an AIBI customer. So just click on dashboards or click on Genie Spaces and go try it out. Uh, if you're not a Databricks SQL customer, um, then you can, you know, you can go and try it for for free uh, just by you know taking a trial on our website. Uh, there's, you know, on any of our product pages, you can just say try for free, and even in the new free edition now, you can uh, you can try it out as well. So it's super easy to get started. Great. So uh, wrapping it up, Tim, thank you so much for coming on, and Welcome. congratulations on being production and yep. helping save lives, Richard. Always an honor always. and a pleasure. <laughs>